Mac T here and uh, the age-old question. This uh, 2019 Ford Edge Titanium with the TOE uh, 2.0 EcoPoost uh, is an all-wheel drive and uh, it says Ford says 5W30 but then again I've been running 5W40 in it. Now irregardless of the brand of the oil that I got sitting here uh, the fact of the matter is is the weight that I'm going to talk to you all about because this 2.0 EcoBoost has been running a good year or more on 540 without nary a problem and uh, matter of fact let's go over some oil testing results that uh, will show you why 5W30 is not really the oil that you want to run in your EcoBoost engine where the 540 actually has some great results. In this video we'll also discuss a little bit about this problem because I had to replace that thing down there. You can hardly see it but uh, it's called an EGR cooler. Something everybody mistakes for these 2.0 EcoBoost. This is a 2019. It does not have the issues that the other previous versions had. It does not have coolant intrusion because it is a newer engine as you can see and uh, we took care of the coolant intrusion issue via the EGR cooler. It was not engine related and uh, we'll show you in the oil report how I determined that in conjunction with the coolant loss and how the oil samples uh, turn that out along with running a heavier weight oil. I will also be discussing uh, some of the fuel that uh, was happening because you know high pressure fuel pump pumping uh, gasoline into the oil uh, and getting it in there and uh, diluting the viscosity and my oil test report will do that and uh, this engine was uh, quote unquote reprogrammed the fuel injectors by Ford so you'll see that there's some questionable issues on the oil change whether or not the fuel actually went down and we'll cover that also all right back to the meat and potatoes this whole video uh, I have here the uh, Blackstone report and it has every oil change that I've done since I bought it and purchased this uh, 2019 Ford Edge and it lists the oils and in this document you will see how I went from a 530 to uh, you know, 1040, 540 oil, and what happened to the metalware counts when I went to the higher viscosity oil. And this is my whole point of the thing, but it also will reflect when I found out about the uh, uh, coolant intrusion through the EGR cooler and the loss of coolant and how it affected the oil in the process. So there's a lot to go here along with the, uh, uh, what is it, the fuel level? Yeah, the amount of fuel in the oil as I was driving it and doing these oil changes and how that increased and decreased and everything else. And uh, so as far as the ultimate end of oil test, we'll have to wait. But uh, this is where I'm at now with it. And I have to put a few more miles on it before I get the other test to see how everything plays out as far as the, uh, the coolant intrusion and everything else through the EGR cooler. But starting off with this uh, test, I started out in, uh, let's see, September 28th of 2020. I ran the oil on it, and I bought it in March, and then I put a few miles on it, then I changed the oil uh, ultimately. But uh, going down with that, uh, we had three parts per million aluminum, zero parts chromium, nine parts iron, 11 parts copper, and then we had some notable uh, issues with silicon because it was a new engine. And uh, basically, I was running uh, a viscosity of 51.0 and a 7.56 on the viscosity, 360 degrees of uh, flash point. I had, uh, let's see, I had uh, fuel of 1.3 okay parts per million at that time and then I uh, had a TBN of 3.0 that was the first oil change second oil change we went up to a four parts for, per million aluminum zero for chromium 
uh, five for iron, and uh, three for copper. Now the, the copper went down, second oil change. Uh, again, uh, the engine is cleaning itself as we're changing the oil. And I was using a pure later Boss oil filter on it at this point. Uh, the other things that happened was the uh, silicon dropped. And then uh, what else happened? Uh, the viscosity was a 53.8 and a 8.42 with a 375 uh, degree flash point and a trace amount of fuel at this point. Okay, so shorter oil change in some ways uh, that we went there. Then I was still using the 530 uh, back in uh, March 14th of 2022, and uh, we had a five uh, parts per million aluminum, one part per million chromium, ten parts per million iron, three parts per million copper, and then we had. Uh, no potassium to speak. Well, we had five uh, parts per million potassium at that point, which wasn't much. It wasn't enough to be out of range. And then uh, the silicon, uh, bop, you know, it bopped up to 28 parts per million, but it wasn't bad. It, everything stayed in there. The viscosity did drop, and uh, the reason why it went to 48.7 and 6.87 with a 325 degree flash point. And that's because of the fuel was at three parts per million for fuel. Okay, so the fuel uh, in the oil had went up. And then uh, I started going and I got ready and I jumped into uh, another 5W30. Again, November 13th of 2022 is when I changed over to the 540. So the next oil test would reflect that. But at that point, I was at three parts per million aluminum zero chromium, six parts per million iron, and uh, one part per million copper, and then uh, potassium was down to zero, and I had a uh, silicon of 24 parts per million. So it was starting to head back down again. And then uh, going down into it, uh, we have a 48.6 uh, viscosity with a 6.84 viscosity, and it had a 330 uh, flash point. So we're dropping flash points, you know, and, and it was up slightly from the last one, but the fuel had dropped down a little bit to 2.8 parts per million or 2.8% uh, fuel. So then we ended up with a TBN of 1.4. So in all these cases, the, t the TBN was dropping down too, and uh, we had that oil change going on there. Now, in uh, February 4th of 2023, uh, I had noticed that I was losing coolant, but I had also jumped up to a 10W40 nap, I believe it was at that point, and I had aluminum drop down to two parts per million, chromium was at zero, and then the uh, iron was at six parts per million with one part per million copper. So we're starting to see something happening uh, at this oil change and the metals are starting to reduce but at this point I did see a rise in potassium which was noted by the Blackstone repo report that said I had went from uh, zero on the last change to a 19 parts per million which is above universal average for potassium they indicated that there's possible coolant intrusion at that point and then also uh, the calcium is much higher in the Eurospec oil. It went from the last time about a, about a 1,066 up to a 2,100 for that. But overall the magnesium, you know, stayed, you know, lower. But uh, the phosphorus and the uh, zinc did climb just slightly higher than what the uh, original 530s were. But my viscosity jumped up to 57.3 in 9.44 now that's because we're using a heavier oil my flash point still remained at 335 which is only five degrees higher than last time and I still had a 2.5 uh, percent fuel okay so this is before I took it into Ford and I was still having this fuel but I did see the fuel going down but then my TBN went way up. I had a 4.7 TBN. 
that is far better than the 530s were doing and then uh, the last oil change uh, that I did I had already had the PCM reprogram for the for the fuel dilution that Ford said that would fix the problem so let's see the results of that and this is the last test oil that I had in it when they fixed the uh, EGR cooler so uh, you gotta take that all into consideration on this this is when the cooler was really starting to leak and uh, that oil test on that uh, 5W or 5 or 10W 40 Eurospec oil that I was running, my aluminum was down to 2, just like the previous one. My chromium was 0, and my iron was 6, and my copper was 1. So if you look at the past tests, I had actually reduced the metal counts and stabilize them by using a 5W or 10W40 vice the 30s so now I've stabilized it quite low in this aspect oil changes are remaining about 3,000 miles and then the potassium in this oil change was up to 30 parts per million so this is the peak of the coolant loss through the EGR cooler and they replaced that during this oil change so the next oil change, I expect the potassium to be lower. But uh, the calcium was definitely a rocket ship higher. It was 2469. So that's going to affect our TBN down below, and you'll see why. But uh, other than that, I had nothing else that was really outstanding. All the uh, phosphorus and zincs and everything uh, were slightly higher due to the better, you know, I consider better Eurospec oil at this point. Uh, has more additives to it. But the uh, fuel, the viscosity had also jumped up to the highest it had ever been at 58.7 with a 9.86. So the, so the viscosity was definitely higher and the flash point had jumped up to 380. That's right. And that 380 was the highest that it had ever been on this EcoBoost. And that was because they could not determine a percentage of fuel this time, but they could only determine that there was a trace of fuel in the oil. Uh, there was no antifreeze that was, they put a question mark in the antifreeze, but the TBN had jumped to the highest level that it had ever been at a 5.4 under these 3,000 mile oil changes. So you can see where in this report that I'll put up here while I'm talking about it, where the improvement occurred by running a 540 or 1040 oil in your 2O EcoBoost has improved the engine wear. It made it less. That's right. So uh, when you're thinking about doing this and then these EcoBoosts are notorious for putting fuel in the oil and then of course you got your coolant intrusions which cause problems and in my case, uh, you know, you guys don't believe me the EGR coolers are the new coolant intrusion for the 2019 plus Ford Edges uh, with the two O's and everything. So uh, Ford switched the engine block coolant intrusion for the EGR cooler, but my engine does not have any type of the old block in it. It has the new and improved block, so uh, we don't have that problem with it. But just keep in mind that uh, in my opinion, okay, and it's only my opinion, based on the testing I've been doing, the 5 and 10W40 Eurospec oil will increase the longevity of your vehicle. Now keep in mind, uh, you know, if you run 1040 summer, that's fine. I do plan on running uh, the 540 when it's cooler weather and things like that. Uh, but finding the Eurospec oil in 5 or 1040 sometimes is problematic at the best. Uh, it's just not a common oil for a lot of cars, but you can get it off the shelf, and that's what I'm doing. As you see, my next oil change for the uh, uh, 2019 will be a Pennzoil 540. Uh, so I'm going to go with that because Penzoil is always tested really, really good. And uh, why not? Why not give it a good shot with the Penzoil? Uh, a lot of people like it and uh, I like it. So we'll see where we're at. But uh, this is what you get when you take and up the viscosity uh, in your engine. Now I'm not advocating going up to a 50, okay? 
but my edge gets the my gas mileage and everything is negotiable uh, as far as any noted difference or anything like that. I run a straight 91 octane non-ethanol fuel in it all the time and uh, it, it's running perfectly fine. My wife, you know, thinks it's ready for race day. She starts it, it doesn't even let it warm up and she then backs out and then guns it and goes where she's going to go. So, yeah, this 2019 is not treated with kids' gloves by any means. Uh, but it is all city driving that we're talking about here. Uh, some of the earlier ones were highway miles, but it apparently did not make any difference when it comes to the fuel. So the, we're going to see, did uh, the, the change in the viscosity, the, the programming of the uh, uh, you know, fuel injectors, did, did that make a difference on the fuel? We're going to see. I have slight doubts about it, but hey, Ford says, oh yeah, we reprogrammed the PCM, so... Uh, we'll see about that, but I do fully expect to have no potassium in my oil next time because I do have a brand new EGR cooler and I cannot speak strong enough for you folks. If you have a 2.0 EcoBoost and you can get the Ford ESP Premium, uh, I bought it. I got a fantastic deal on it online through a, through a Ford dealership. Uh, they, you know, I hit the Thanksgiving sale, then I got the military discount. I literally only paid about $2,500 for five years and 150,000 miles. So, uh, you can look and you can find them pretty inexpensive, but based on the cost that I paid, it is already paid for itself because I have replaced the EGR cooler, okay? And then a couple other things that have been done to, with the reprogramming and all this other stuff. So the premium care is pretty much already paid for itself. And if there's anything else that happens, that's fine. Uh, also remember, change your PTU fluid. That's right, change that gear loop. Uh, I do mine about every other oil change or 6,000 miles. So that's coming up this next oil change. But uh, we want to keep those PTUs going good too. So don't forget about those. But this is MAG-T. I hope you learned something from my experience. I'm doing these oil tests to help you all understand what's going on with your edges and your EcoBoost. And hopefully my experience and my paying the money for the testing helps out. If you feel you want to help me pay for this testing, uh, by all means hit the super thanks button and uh, help support me in that aspect. But don't forget to see me uh, on MeWe. Yeah, I got on MeWe and I have relented and went back to Facebook. Uh, and the greeting was fantastic and I thank you all for your support. So hit that like button on this video. Remember, my feet hit the floor today. I'm having a great day. I want you to have a great day too. Mercy Grill's always got a couple one-liners for you. And of course, Band of One loves playing music. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.